so it's like. So I got one thing I just I'm just gonna start this. You wake up at five o'clock in the morning and you realize your dad is gonna speak to the entire school. Oh my god, right? So just for the next 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I'm not Cheyenne's dad. I'm actually uh, the crazy Valentine guy. That'll work. And, then, and, and if you don't get anything out of what I'm doing, nothing. You're like, man, that guy was just crazy. I don't even know why they brought him in here. Remember this, you guys, right here. Do what gives you the best stories. It's awesome. It, it will, you, will get, you will have an amazing life. You will travel the world. You will do everything. And literally, it's all its all from that. It's Just remember this. So again, if you remember anything else, if you Google me, Lonnie Anderson, so this crazy person comes up. Blonde hair and WKRP. This is like the Kim Kardashian of the 70s. Her and I, we compete on Google about who gets more, more real estate. <laughs> I'm, I'm Hickory Apache Indian. I'm a Shika from Mexico, Chichimeca. Um, I'm from northern New Mexico. Um, I was abandoned as a baby. Um, I was raised in a kind of a foster home setting. I have several brothers and sisters, fosters. I was raised in a kind of a violent household. So I saw my first gunfight when I was probably six years old. I saw my dad try to shoot somebody. Um, my presentation is going to be sad and happy. Because that's what, that's what Valentine's is, right? Sad and happy. This is my sister. Um, she actually was put in jail and for selling heroin. And this is my nephew. And he spent his first six months in jail because she was pregnant with him. And when she was doing the heroin, it affected him. And he'll have to be taken care of for the rest of his life because, because of the drugs. And the, But the amazing thing is, is that I am his uncle. So he will learn how to ride. Like, he, he's actually Shinabe and Ojibwe and Lakota. I'm Apache. But we were, we were the first horse culture. That's what the people, the people don't think the Lakotas were. But the Apaches were actually, right? Am I right? We were the first. We were the first. Vulnerability. So my daughter's sitting over there saying, oh my god, my dad's talking about being adopted. And, Vulnerability, the, the quality or the state of being exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed, either physically or emotionally. Let me tell you guys, this is the most amazing word you will ever learn right here. Vulnerability is your superpower. All those stories that they told you to hide and to like not tell people and to not share with people who you are, that's exactly. That's what makes you so original. Uh, if you, you try to copy everybody else, you're just going to be like everybody else. The vulnerability is of who I was and how I was raised. That makes me who I am. I'm going to go faster because I'm not. So these are all the companies I've worked for. Again, just from, just from doing that thing, of, uh, do what gives you the best stories. These are all the people I've worked for, too. You probably don't know any of them because I'm old. So Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, Samuel Jackson, you guys probably know him. Um, you do know this guy, so <laughs> I worked with uh, Brady Smurf, the voice of Brady Smurf for like, oh, 20 years, and Danny Goldman, he was, he's an amazing guy. And you ever worked for this guy. So the amazing thing I learned about working for Spike Lee, and I walked away from it, was that he signs everything, every piece of paper he gives away, he signs it, love Spike. Even if he doesn't even know you, even if he doesn't, even, and that's the most amazing thing about being vulnerable is, is that he doesn't care. He doesn't care to say love. I've been named the king of Valentine's Day. I have <laughs> been named the most romantic man in Dubai. <laughs> I mean, this looks great on my resume, right? It's like, oh, we're here, get this, don't hold up. <laughs> okay, so this is the hard part too. So, so, so you you're, you do all this amazing stuff at school, and then you get home, and you're like, I'm exhausted, mom. I'm exhausted, dad. I'm exhausted, grandma. I'm exhausted, and you just want to go look at Instagram or whatever. I'm gonna beg you. I'm gonna encourage you to go home and do just do something 
that, that, that is your own, that is creative, that you can do it. I do crazy stuff, like I make pancakes for my daughters every morning. I make a lot of unicorns. Not anymore, now that she's wow. in sixth grade, they don't matter, I make unicorns anymore, but I do a lot of, I do a lot of stuff just because it, it makes me happy. And then every once in a while I sneak in um, the, a deer, you know, because I'm usually I raised in Wyoming. I do this, ever since my two daughters were little babies and they started to go to preschool, I put a note in their, in their, in their lunch boxes. And every single day, and it's always said, be brave, be kind. Because I don't expect them, I don't expect anything else from them. I don't care what they do for a living, I don't care where they travel, I don't care what kind of person they are, I don't care who, anything else. I just want them to be brave and I want them to be kind. So I get to put the things on there that I want to do, like my movies that I love, the comics that I watch, um, 80s and 90s rap that I love. <laughs> Um, Sesame Street. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's Black History Month. It's a great way to like just put in my heroes, Angela Davis. When I worked for Spike Lee, I got to meet Angela Davis, and I mean, I almost peed my pants. It was, it was like she was so awesome. Oh, it's the greatest movie I've ever. I've never seen this. Right, right. Oh my God. This is the best movie. This movie will save your life. My giant. Oh, up in our, and we live in the South Valley, so, you know, people are always like, oh my God, the South Valley is so dangerous, and then they drive by our house, and they're like, is that Charlie Brown? <laughs> <laughs> or the Grinch? We, we, do, we do all kinds of stuff, so, so I'm not telling you you have to draw the Mona Lisa on an A. I'm saying, just do something cool, do something like yours that you love. It took me years and years and years to be able to do that. Um, Cheyenne wanted to do something with her, her she came with me, she's like, well, I'm gonna do something with Vi's hoverboard. So we thought maybe a car, maybe a boat, you know, maybe something, and we ended up um, doing this. And again, it's like, you, wanna, you don't wanna make the most money in the world and be successful? Sell ideas. Anybody, I like I'm the guy who made it, helped her make it, but she's the one that came up with the idea. So what happens is when, when you come up with the idea, everybody loves you. They're like, they're like, oh, I, they wanted to take a Comic Con, and everybody wanted to take pictures with Cheyenne. <laughs> okay, on Valentine's Day, when everybody else last night was scrambling at Walgreens to like get a card that they hadn't written or take their, this person that they love more than anything in the entire world to a dinner where the people are pissed off because they don't want to work. They want to be with their, they want to be with their family. When my wife came home, there was a carousel turning in our yard down in the South Valley, just slowly weird music, you know. <laughs> and people say, oh, you know, if I had all that money, absolutely, I could, I could do that too. And it's like, look, that didn't cost me anything. I went up to the Heights, and I found the guy who had that, and I knocked on his door, and I said, hey, I'm the crazy Valentine guy, I'm the most, I'm the most romantic man in Dubai. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, can I use your carousel? And he was like, no. It's a $100,000 carousel. It takes four guys to set up. It takes four hours to set it up. So there's no way. But his wife was standing next to him, and she was like, God, that's the most romantic Story I've ever heard in my life. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and we, I looked at her, and he looked at her, and she was like, "That's my carousel. You gave that to me." And he's like, "I'll see." She said, "I'll see you on Saturday." She came down. She set it up. There's the four guys setting it up. He's so pissed. Her, her husband's so mad. I'm sorry about the swearing. He was so mad. She made him like wear a tie. He was like, "Oh my god." So, so there it was. And you know, the most beautiful thing that happened that night wasn't, the most beautiful thing that happened that night, my wife said, it wasn't that there was a carousel slowly turning in our yard. The most beautiful thing that happened that night is a little car all beat up, dents all over it. I think it's like a gremlin or something. I don't even remember what kind of car it was. It comes flying into our yard. 
And, and we're like, what the heck? And he pulls up and it's this family, it's tiny little family, these two little girls and this, this, uh, these two men, or this, this man and um, his wife. And, and they, they, they're, they don't speak English, so my wife was talking to them in Spanish and the guy was like, I'm oh, so sorry, I thought this was a carnival. And the, two, and the little girl in the back was like, hey, can I ride it? <laughs> and, and then the guy, you know, put it together, he's like, no! Oh my God, no! Like, like you don't have any insurance, so if you fall off, they'll sue me. And it was like, he's just like, absolutely. And his wife walks over the side of the car. She just looks at him, she just shakes her head. She opens up the door, and those two little girls just like, zoom! They run across my yard, they jump on the carousel, and they ride it like six times. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Two, two little girls riding our carousel. But my wife said, you know, the most beautiful thing that happened that night, the most beautiful thing that she's going to remember is just like, those two little girls are going to be 16 and 17 one day. They're going to be riding through the South Valley with their friends. And they're going to say, one crazy Valentine night in this old dirty lot with garbage and stuff in there. Like, we rode the carousel like when we were like five. And their friends are never going to believe me. <laughs> so I do lots of stuff. You guys can see all of this. This is from like a 100-pound pinata. I drew these all over. This is just chalk. Again, you don't have to have a ton of supplies to do something beautiful. I put this where we had our first kiss, where we had our first apartment, where um, my wife we used to work at the Maxwell at UNM, and I used to walk to get her when we were first dating where her dad played with my kids. Um, the Guild, if you guys ever been here, the guy who runs it, he like brought the concessions out and he gave us free popcorn. Um, this is all from Goodwill. I don't, I don't ever spend any money. This is all just found stuff. Um, this is just recycled paper. These are 30 foot flowers. Yeah, I make my daughters help me. This is great. 40 of my wife's friends. You can get people and they'll, they'll do it. Like I had people call me this year and say, I want to help you. These 40 of my wife's friends, uh, this is Mr. Renee. I know if you guys remember Mr. Renee. Yes. Yes. I was the saddest person, but you know, we got somebody who was just as good to replace him right there, that man. <laughs> so, all these, all these things. Um, rocks, I, I used rocks. I was just gonna do a couple lines from my, my wife's favorite poem, but it ended up being like um, the entire poem and it covered a whole, um, an entire uh, Look paper. at the detail, every rock in its perfect place. It's the perfect rock poem for Bonnie's perfect love. She actually cried this morning. Is she really lucky? From Sky 7, a view of this massive display of affection. It took days to make. Everybody asked me that, like, well, how do you come up with it? It's like, how do you not come up with it? Bonnie well, says I'm he doesn't terrible. want to remember what he's doing, but rather the appreciation he has for his wife and daughters. I want to be the guy who, like, loved his family so much that he, you know, he would do this. He would get on his hands and knees and write an entire E. Cummings poem in, uh, in rocks. In the South Valley. What? In the South Valley. So, so I live in the South Valley. You guys hear about the South Valley. South Valley man killed in the drive-by. South Valley man arrested for this. South Valley man um, busted for drugs. What, what happens? You know what happens when you're crazy? Guess what happens when you're crazy? They put you on TV! You see it all the time, right? They put you on TV. And you know when they put you on TV, most of the crazy people, they have that great opportunity to say something beautiful or, or inspire somebody or do something. And they don't. I don't know why. We, we, we must be we're crazy a little bit. But when I get on TV, I make sure and, and, I, and, I, and I do that. I, I, Bonnie Anderson has big ideas. Putting a carousel in the front yard, painting a mural, getting people across the world to take these photos. He does it for his wife and each Valentine's Day. This year, a poetry reading at Deep Space Coffee. Even Leslie Ultima author Rodolfo Anaya took part. And happy Valentine's Day. I was in awe. I couldn't believe that he said yes. He was super excited. He actually read a poem that 
in her own first way. Musician and poet Lucky Hardo she, She's the national poet laureate now. Author Sherman Alexie made this video Valentine. Anne Baslani kissing in a tree, K I S S I N G. Atlantic <laughs> poet Jimmy Santiago Baca showed up. You can go to the coffee shops to read, and he said, you know, yes. Others of all ages also read to Anne. We walked in the door, and my family was here, and the poets were here, and it just felt like this is something we've come together to celebrate, right? Love. Now, before any has. Love. So, so this. I did this last year. It's a it's a hundred pound pinata, and it got brought by a, a it got lifted up by a crane. The news posted it online, and the first comment said, "And it's from this guy named he was from Arizona, and it said, and it all goes in the garbage, <laughs> right? Well, Mr. Arizona, <laughs> it is not in the garbage, and you know what? People tell us hundreds, maybe thousands of amazing things." about how special and how beautiful we are. And you know, we only remember the one bad thing that we hear. So you know what? You and I are gonna work on that. I'm almost done. They're like, oh my God, this guy's way too long. I'm almost done. They're likely going to put most others to shame. His wife, he wants his wife to know how much he loves her and how he's recruited people from all over the world. News 13's Tina Jensen reports. From Sydney to Saudi Arabia to a Valentine from Vietnam, one husband is showing his love for his wife by asking other people to show their love too. I just thought, wow, it's the world's a lot smaller than I thought it was. Being coming from Albuquerque, New Mexico, you know, in the South Valley. The, South the idea Valley. itself started small. Ask a few friends from around the globe to hold up I Love Anne signs. There's just so much going on that it doesn't seem like there's a lot of hope in the world. And I thought I'd just reach out to a couple friends that I knew that I work with around the world and um, and just see what they thought. Soon the Valentine's Day project took on a life of its own. Emails turned into Facebook posts, and now, still two weeks away from Valentine's Day, That's a Bonnie Anderson has collected photos from 40 different countries, all paying tribute to his wife of 13 years. I love my wife more than anything in the world now. She's the most loved woman in the entire world from every corner. Anne says one of her favorite parts of the Valentine is that he hasn't spent a dime. I think if you just take a second and say, what can I do to tell somebody how much I appreciate them or love them without having to go through the break the bank? So how does it feel to be Anne this Valentine's Day? She says it's actually a little challenging because she's not a center of attention kind of gal, but she loves that this Valentine is about more than just the two of them. And I think that remembering that we're part of the community and the bigger picture, we're part of the world, and that love is Palestinian and real. And that this is a piece of things that this is my piece of an idea. Tina Jensen, KRP. So I'm almost done. So again. Every second, every second that I get to on on a TV program. <laughs> every second I get takes away from all the bad news. And just think if everybody in this room did one amazing Valentine and got the news, there would be no bad news. They, they, would, they would never do it. This is the last part, and I promise silence. Like, oh my God, this guy keeps talking. <laughs> okay, so this is my, this is one of my favorite ones. In, in Syria, there's a war going on, right? And people are dying right now. The, the, the Turks are, 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 are flying over helicopters with huge bomb, barrel bombs, and they're dropping them on people's houses. And they're dropping them, and the Russians are fighting, and we have troops in there. And there's people, and there's sects of different these people of all these different tribes and all these different um, different groups, and they're all fighting. And and there's a lot, and it's a, and it's really bloody. And you don't see a lot of it on, on TV. I worked with a man in, in Dubai, and his two brothers are in Syria, and he said, "Hey, do you want me to get you a sign from Syria?" And I said, "No way, man. I don't want your family." He, his two brothers were in hiding in the mountains, protecting his brother and his little sister. 
Two weeks before this, this sign, this says I love Anne on it. Two weeks before this sign was his brother, one of his brothers, snuck down into Damascus and was stealing fuel for, um, for, for, for heat because, because it's freezing there right now. You, you, we think of the Middle East as being hot and deserty. No, the, the Middle East is freezing. And, um, you know, all, all the Bible tells you, every, all these things tell you, any kind of inscript, any kind of history tells you it's freezing there. So they're, he's stealing this gas, and he gets caught by the, by the soldiers, and they take him and they execute him. Two weeks before this, this was going to And two weeks later, I get this sign. And he said, you know, my my brother, my brother got shot, he got killed. And my other brother said, um, he said he wanted to get you a sign. So this guy got up, he walked four hours in the morning. He, his two buddies took rifles so they protect themselves. They hiked to an undisclosed place. This isn't where they're in hiding. <clears throat> and he held up this sign and they took a photo and they smuggled it out of Syria. And he sent it to me. And I said, oh my God, don't do that. You know, it's like that. And he said, hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. He's like, my brother sent a message to you. He said, look, he said, there's only one thing in my life, he said, that he, that he would risk his life for. And he said, it's true love. And, 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 and he sent me this, he sent me this photo. And that to me is, that's the most beautiful Valentine. When you do beautiful stuff, it, it attracts beautiful stuff. And, and when you do terrible stuff, it attracts terrible stuff. So again, you're like, that guy was crazy. I don't understand anything he said. I don't even know why they brought him in. Even if that was the case. Do this, you guys. But we can do this. It takes all the courage in the world to do that. Because every decision you're going to be like, no, I got to go the easy way. I got to go the easy way. That is the hardest thing you'll ever do. And I'm telling you, it's the most. It, it, it saved my life. It saved my life. And uh, and I just want to say thank you guys for letting me come in and talk to you and giving me your time. I appreciate it. And I thank my daughter for not um, <laughs> not like coming up and kicking me in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it.